a pharmaceutical study has found that the antiretroviral drug lenacapavir is in fact highly effective in preventing HIV infection. This is when the drug is administered for six months per shot. Uh, the study has not been presented for scientific peer review and it's been published in uh, scientific journals. It's not been published in scientific journals. But let's unpack this further. We're joined this afternoon by the CEO of the Desmond Tutu Health Foundation at the University of Cape Town, Professor Linda Gale Becker. It's a great pleasure talking to you. Thanks very much indeed for coming on to the program. T tell us more about what is, I'm sure, a groundbreaking study. Thanks, Michelle. It certainly is. I think this is the first time we've ever seen zero infections in a pre-exposure prophylaxis study ever. Um, we saw some recent good news with the with its sister drug called Cabotegravir, which gave us an 89% reduction in HIV infection. But this is literally zero infections in the arm that received the injectable PrEP. Wow. So it's um, six months per shot, is that right? Yes, so you give a loading dose um, right at the beginning with oral tabs and then you just need six monthly shots uh, subcutaneously, so just under the skin, mm -hmm. um, and that protects you, it seems, for a full six month pr uh, period. And so, you know, two injections a year and you're protected. So when we say protected, Professor uh, Becker, what do we mean? Protected in in terms of still taking other precautions, um, protected from new infections, even if those precautions fail? Yeah, so what, what, how the trial was uh, designed was that individuals were given the Lenacapavir subcutaneous injections. They were counseled about you know, the possibility of infection. They were counseled that the drug may in fact not work. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, people were followed up over a period of time. What we found was nobody got infected in that arm. Uh, but the other arm that received placebo injections, um, as well as oral PrEP, so oral FTDF, mm -hmm. so another antiviral, which is a pill, you have to take it daily. We know that individuals struggle to take something daily. And indeed, we saw many more infections in the arm where they were receiving the oral PrEP compared to the injectable lenacapavir. So we always advise that people think about other risks to sexual uh, encounters, so STIs, unintended pregnancies, and of mm -hmm. course this is where male condoms can be uh, effective. But in this instance, to protect against HIV, the lenacapavir injection seems to have really played a, a, you know, a significant and monumental role. Hmm. So I'm seeing here that the participants were to be told which study arm they were on and they were offered the opportunity to move on to the injections if they had been on prevention pills. What does that mean, Professor Becker? So in the beginning of a phase three trial, we randomize individuals uh, randomly. Mm -hmm. So that is to reduce confounders of bias and so on. So in this study, because we can no longer offer anybody a completely placebo arm, people were given oral prep, oral pills um, as placebo or active pills. And in the other arm, they were given active injection or placebo injection. So in other words, everybody got a pill, everybody oh, got an injection, but some people were given the active of either of those. That randomized phase has been recommended to be stopped by the Independent Data Safety Man Monitoring Board who look at the unblinded data because everybody's blinded in the study, the participants, the researchers, but there is one small group of individuals who are allowed to look at the data at very pre-specified um, points. And they've recently met, looked at the unblinded data and said, no, this is no longer equitable to allow the one arm to not benefit to the extent that the other arm is benefiting. And so now we will unblind the study and individuals will be allowed to choose whether they want to carry on with oral uh, pills or whether they would like to move on to the injectable. And it will be in an open label fashion. In other words, now people will know what uh, product they are taking and they'll take it with their own um, volition uh, as they wish. Mm.
And in terms of side effects, did you um, or did the study notice any, any particular side effects? Well, it is an injection with a sharp needle. And so for individuals who don't like needles, it obviously is less attractive. Uh, but those were the most of the sort of adverse events. What people found, uh, the, the parts they didn't like about it was the inject, what we call injection site reactions, which were mostly related to pain or a small nodule, which forms at the place where the injection is given, mm -hmm. that does disappear over time. But initially, when the injection is given, there's a nodule that forms. So that was mostly what people complained of or brought to the attention of the researchers. The rest of the uh, the side effects were very minimal and really not a problem when you compare the two arms. Yeah. Um, so... By all accounts, one of the most significant results we've seen in HIV prevention history. I would say particularly amongst young women and girls, um, because we've really found it hard to drive incidents down in young people who are, by all accounts, you know, sexually active and in areas where the virus is is moving, is net, you know, is is being transmitted. Young people are most at risk, uh, yet they often struggle to do something daily. It just it hasn't quite found its way in their brains to do something daily. And so we've struggled with the daily intervention. And so this opportunity to use a depot prevention method really does seem like it may be an answer for, for this population in particular. I'm seeing here, uh, Professor Becker, that it's 100 percent. This injectable is 100 percent effective for women in particular. Why are we saying that for women in particular? Well, we've only we've only seen results in women at the moment. Uh, there is a second trial underway called Purpose Two, which is looking at cisgender men, uh, transgender men, uh, men who have sex with men, and other binary people who have sex with men. So, in other words, there is a group that is really looking at other types of sexual activity. And that study is underway and we hope it'll show similar results, but we're still waiting to get those results. So we only have results in young women and girls at the moment, but this really, they really are spectacular. And I must say, this is in a clinical trial. We obviously now need to see this move into real world settings and mm -hmm. see whether we get the same kind of results uh, when indeed this is um, being scaled up in, in, in the real world. And I see uh, the study also involved pregnant and lactating women as well. Yes, so this was the other, I think, really progressive thing about Purpose One, as the study is called. It involved uh, young people as young as 16. So we were allowed to enroll 16 and 17 year olds. And it involved people who uh, became pregnant. They signed another informed consent to say that they understood. And then they were allowed to continue with the product if they so wished, um, which means we will get data, which we very rarely do at the time uh, of the results for the for the more general population. We have results in minors and in pregnant people. So this is terrific for those populations who often lag behind in terms of evidence. Yeah, absolutely. So when we talk about rolling it out and, and getting uh, proper results, real world results, how do you see that being rolled out? Yeah. Well, this is always where the rubber hits the road, right? We now need to get the product into, uh, first of all, to regulators so that country regulators can approve it for use. Um, it'll first go to the FDA, it'll go to other regulators such, such as the South African and the Ugandan because that's where the trial was conducted. Uh, but we hope that it, it will be you know, sent to other regulators in our region because it's important that other countries have opportunity. It's then going to matter how much the product costs and we're waiting to see. Gilead has said there will be tiered pricing for low and middle income countries and they have also said that they will offer the licenses to generic companies. So that is a key way to get the price down if pharmaceuticals that are generic start to manufacture this uh, product mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. it's the next few months where we'll hear what those plans are and how they unfold. We really will stay on the case and, and be as, as strong advocates to see the 
price affordable so that our governments can can buy uh, or agencies can buy and we can make sure that young women and girls benefit yeah. from this as soon as possible. Well, it's like the seatbelt, isn't it? Um, uh, the inventor of the seatbelt, I, I believe, didn't take the patent, didn't want to make any money out of it because the potential to save lives outweighed the benefit, the financial benefit. This is exactly the same or, or it should be. Well, that's what we're hearing from Gilead Sciences, and we hope that that is the way it's going to go. And, uh, you know, I absolutely concur. This is what I would call a, you know, a commodity that is for the global good. Mm. Um, and or it should be affordable and it should reach every single person who, who you know, needs it and deserves uh, to have their lives protected. Especially when we think about Professor Becker, just as we round off our conversation, the kind of financial burden on countries with HIV prevalence? Well, that's right. You, you know, we had 1.3 million people get infected uh, this year. Every single one of those individuals will need antiretrovirals for the rest of their lives um, if they are to stay healthy and well. And of course, young women and girls also have the risk of becoming pregnant and vertically transmitting HIV to their unborn children. So there you have a double benefit, if you like, by saving infections in young women and girls. So really important yeah. to do that. Absolutely. And such an incredibly important breakthrough in HIV prevention. Professor Linda Gale Becker, always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks very much for coming on to the program. She is the CEO of the Desmond Tutu Health Foundation. And yeah, a twice yearly HIV prevention shot uh, succeeding in what is a pivotal trial. It's now out on uh, how the rollout happens. That's the next issue we need to deal with.